Hey guys, how are you all doing? This is my predictions for UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine versus Lim. And I gotta tell you, I'm not gonna be able to make uh, predictions for most of these fights. Um, the UFC signed a bunch of guys, you know, as, to fill this card as part of their new international expansion. So I'm gonna spend some more time here talking about my thoughts on their international expansion, um, talking about Uf my thoughts on UFC Fight Pass, and I will still get predictions on, talking about the fighters that I, I'm familiar with here. But um, yeah, just a bunch of guys that you've never heard of. And I gotta say, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, they're new, you know, they're signing a bunch of guys to fill these cards that we don't care about and that obviously are not UFC caliber, but you know, UFC caliber really doesn't mean anything anymore. But you know, I understand that, that I think, you know, this international expansion is part of growing the sport, growing the business. Um although I think there's a real, you know, danger here of alienating North Northern American fans, and you know, there's questions whether you know, you know, North America, the big, I think the biggest pay per view market for the UFC, but you know, maybe with this international expansion, they're gonna turn to the rights based uh, model, and maybe that will, you know. Maybe that will replace pay per view, and they won't need pay per view anymore. But um, you know, I think there's definitely the danger of turning hardcore fans into casual fans. I will be watching this card. Um, I don't really know if I want to pay the ten bucks for Fight Pass. You know, obviously there's going to be that Gustafson fight, which is going to be real important to watch. But um, you know. I've been following, watching UFC religiously since UFC 100, um, when they started showing prelims for the entire card, I was so excited, and I watched every single prelim, um, like four years now, I've just been watching the UFC non-stop, and you know, this is the first card where I feel like, you know, I don't really need to watch this, and especially if I'm gonna have to pay ten bucks to watch cards like these. You know, I feel like I could, you know, go without it. And I think that's a real danger. Um, when you're building guys like Gustafson, you know, why why are you going to make people pay to see it and put it somewhere that, you know, casual fans are not going to see it? But um, maybe they're just giving up on North America and with the international expansion, they feel that, you know, this is a better way to grow the sport and maybe they don't need the North American fan base anymore. Um and the North American fan base has been, you know, dying off over the past few years. You know, it's not the same as the days of Chuck Liddell and Brock Lesnar. Um, maybe they're they're going to be able to grow the business with uh, going to all these different countries and, you know, sustain the business that way from whatever, you know, whatever uh, profit they can make overseas and internationally but um i think you know i think they're definitely gonna kind of kill off some of the hardcore fans with these international cards filled with fighters you've never heard of, heard of and also you know i think it's really ridiculous that they have to justify cutting guys like okami and you know fitch and these other guys saying the roster is too full but then they and saying they need to cut more guys, yet they bring in all of these unknown guys that you don't care about that aren't UFC caliber to fill this card. But they're catering to the individual markets, and you know it's their business to run. And who knows? Maybe, maybe eventually this is going to be what's better for the sport and really help uh, grow the sport. And maybe it'll even help it grow here in North America somehow. In the end, maybe it'll just bring more money to the sport and help it grow here but anyways uh let me predict the fights that i can so on the preliminary card on oh, one more thing about ufc fight pass um the fight library 
Um, it doesn't have every single fight. I'm not too familiar with the Dark Ages and the fights from that time period, but um, a lot of prelim fights, like a lot of prelims from some of the fuel cards and some of the, the UFC live cards that were on TV, um, they don't have every single prelim there on uh, on in the fight library on UFC Fight Pass, which I think is really kind of sad. I mean, you know, this is this is the sport of MMA. This is the sport's history, and you know, especially now that we're paying, I don't think it could be that hard for them to you know make all of those fights available. And it's also organized really poorly if you if you check it out. But those are just my thoughts on fight pass so Bantamweight on the online preliminary card Leandro Issa versus Russell Dwayne Noani I don't know I can't pronounce these guys names but I never heard of either of these guys next up Bantamweight Dustin Kimura taking on John De Los Reyes um, Kimura guy who had an impressive debut against uh, Chico Camus. He won by rear naked choke, I believe, but showed a good guard in that fight, kind of a crafty guard and good submission game. And then just got really beat up in his last fight against Mitch Gagnon. Uh, kind of beat up on the feet and then was put to sleep with a guillotine choke. John De Los Reyes, I don't know anything about, but... uh Kimura seems like a talented guy. It was a 1-1 one, one and lost one. But, again, I don't know about John De Los Reyes. Lightweight, Merbeck, Tazuma versus Tai Hyun Bang. Don't know them. Bantamweight, Royston Wee versus Dave Galera. Don't know them. Lightweight, Katsunori Kakuno versus Quinn Mulhern. Uh, Quinn Mulhern, uh got TKO'd by Rick Story in, in his last fight. Um, really don't know much about him, but I don't know, it seemed like he had a limited skill set, and I don't know. Um, I'm Here I might take Kakunu just because I really wasn't impressed with anything Mulhern did in his last fight. And next up, uh, one of the fights probably, actually this is probably the fight I care most about on the card at Featherweight Max 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 Blessed Holloway versus Will Chope. Um, don't know anything about Will Chope. I think he's an American guy, but I think I read somewhere that um, he's a military guy and stationed at Guam, and that's where he that's where he you know has had his MMA career. But at Holloway, um, I've been really impressed with this guy, especially in the Diego Bermudez fight. Um, really uh, kept Bermudez at range with his striking and in fights before that against against um, Justin Lawrence really showed um, great striking put him away um, the guy has really good unorthodox striking stuff like spinning back kicks um, that kind of stuff I think he's a really good striker and then really got shut down in his last fight by Conor McGregor. But super young. He's had some really impressive finishes in the UFC and I'm high on the guy. Uh, I really like his striking game and um, I'm going to pick him to win this fight. I think he'll finish Will Chope early, probably in the first round. And onto the main card, Bantamweight Kyung Ho Kang versus Shunichi Shimizu. Um, Kyung Ho Kang, I believe he lost to Bruce Leroy, Casera, Bruce Leroy, Alex Caseras, and his last fight lost to Chico Camus, although that was a bit controversial. Um, had top position a lot in that fight. Seems like a decent grappler, um, at least maintaining top position. Um, I'll pick him to win here, you know, having the UFC experience, but again, don't know anything about Shunichi Shimizu. Welterweight, Kichi Kunimoto versus Luis Dutra. Uh, don't know either of these guys again. Luis Dutra has a Wikipedia page. Looks like he was on Tough Brazil 2, but um, I don't remember him. Besoro. 
is his nickname. I'm trying to remember him. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember who he was on the show. And at Featherweight, the co-main event, Tats, Tatsuya Kawajiri versus Sean Soriano. Kawajiri, I remember him. Um, I, I haven't followed his career, but I remember he fought Gilbert Melendez and Strikeforce got finished. But let's pull up his record. He's been on a five-fight win streak. Um, beat Drew Fickett. Uh, Jokum, Hansen, Kazuyuki Miyata, Donald Sanchez, and Michihiro Omegawa in his last most recent fight. Um, I just don't know the guy. I, I've only seen him fight Gilbert Melendez and got smashed there. Obviously, Melendez, one of the one of the top fighters in the world in his division. So I don't know. Um, Maybe I'll go with Kawajiri for the experience, but I really don't know. And then the main event, uh, welterweight fight, Tarek Safadine versus Hyun Gyu Lim. Uh, Hyun Gyu Lim, uh, a newer guy in the UFC, he's 28, and he knocked out Marcelo Guamares, and in his most recent fight, uh, much more impressive because the opponent knocked out Pascal Krause. Um, Guamarace was basically a nobody in the UFC. He had had one fight before that, I think against Dan Stitgen. But uh, he knocked him out there with a flying knee, I believe. That was in the second round. Um, before that, didn't do too much in the fight as I remember it, but against Pascal Krause. Um, Pascal Krause, a guy who never really made much noise in the UFC, but I watched several several of his fights and I respected him as a kickboxer and um Hyun Gyu Lim really took it to him in that last fight. Looked great. Um really good striking, powerful striking. Um a real big strong guy, has a big physique. But uh Tarek Safadine, uh the guy has a win over Nate Marquardt, was a last strike force champ. He's on a four-fight win streak, uh, being Mark Hart, Roger Bowling, Tyler Stinson, Scott Smith. And he also fought Tyron Woodley, lost to him. But, um, you know, he's fought Tyron Woodley, Nate Mark Hart. Um, Nate Mark Hart obviously being a top guy at one point. Um, I have to go with Safadine here with the experience. I remember him really uh, smashing Mark Hart's leg in their fight, just leg kicking him to death over and over again. And that's really the only time I've ever seen him fight, I believe. Yeah. But I have to go with Safadine here just from the experience. Although his last six fights have gone to decision. And uh, Hyun Gyu Lim looks like he has, you know, more power, the better finishing capability. But I just have to go with Safadine being in there with guys like uh, Mark Hart and Tyron Woodley. I think he's going to win this fight. Although I wouldn't be uh, too surprised if Hyun Gyu Lim can knock him out. <clears throat> so those are my brief thoughts on UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine versus Lim. Thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Check out my recap for UFC 168, Weidman versus Silva 2. Please like the video, comment, and subscribe. Take care, you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.